question 20. Well, question 20 says, solve the following. The function is x plus two squared. And you have dy over dx equals to, well, on the right-hand side, you have five minus eight y minus four x y. Okay, we're going to try to solve this. So the very first thing you should be asking, is it separable? Can we separate these? Okay, it seems like here you cannot separate these two. Why is that? Here you have three terms. If you factor out y, you end up with, so if you write it this way, you get five minus, let us just factor out negative y, you get eight plus four x, and then, here, if you bring five to the other side, again, if you do the division, you're going to see the multiplication between these two. So there is no way you can separate these. If there was no five, then you are able to separate these. But this five here makes this impossible to separate these from each other. So it seems like it's not separable. So we need to check to see if it's linear or not. So since it's not separable, we cannot apply the method of uh, separating um, differential equation to solve it. We need to check to see if it's linear or not. Check if it is linear with the knowing that y is, for example, equals to f of x. So here you have a sub one x y prime plus a sub zero x, y, you have the coefficient in x or constant. And on the right-hand side, you must have a function of x. So let's take a look at this. Can we rearrange this? Here you have x plus two squared. So far, so good. Y prime. And if you bring these two to the other side, you get plus. I'm going to factor out y. So you see we have eight plus four x, y. And on the right-hand side, I have a five. So let's stop comparing these two. The coefficient of y prime is in x. The coefficient of y is in x. And on the right-hand side, you have a constant. And it means that you have a non-homogeneous first order linear differential equation. So it is linear. You have to stop and check the method first. Write it in standard form. In standard form, you must see y prime plus pxy equals to qx. The leading coefficient of y prime must be equal to 1. So let us do the algebra. Divide by, so this is first step, algebra. Divide by x plus two squared to get rid of this coefficient, which is not equal to one. So here you get y prime plus, let us factor out eight here, let's factor out four here. You get plus four, two plus x, y divided by x plus two squared equals to five divided by x plus two squared. We can simplify these two, of course. So we get y prime plus 4y divided by, let's just write this in fraction form so we can distinguish between these, x plus 2 equals to 5 over x plus 2 squared. So we wrote this in standard form. Well, what's the next step? The next step is to find the integrating factor. So to integrating factor. So e to power px dx, which is equal to e to the integral, what is px? 4 over x plus 2 dx. So this is going to be equal to e to uh, 4 ln of absolute value of x plus 2. You can bring this 2 
as the exponent here, and you can cancel out E and LN. So what you get, you get X plus two to the power four. This is the integrating factor. Integrating factor is X plus two to the fourth power. Step three, well, multiply everything by the integrating factor. Multiply every term by the integrating factor. Okay, so what do we have? We have x plus two to the power four times y prime plus four divided by x plus two times x plus two to the power four times y equals to five. Okay, here you have x plus two to the second times x plus two to the fourth power. So what you can do, you can just simplify the whole thing. You get x plus two to the fourth y prime plus four times x plus two to the third y equals to five times x plus two to the second. Now on the left-hand side, we need to see the expanded form of the product rule. It means that the compact form is the over dx of y and the integrating factor. And on the right hand side, we have just created a new expression. So take a look at the left hand side. This is your function times y prime plus the derivative of this function, which is 4x plus 2 to the third times y. So this is obvious. Here we have the dx or the product rule between these two x plus two to the fourth times y. And on the right hand side, you have five times x plus two to the second. Okay, step five, take the integral of both sides. Five, take the integral. Okay, in step five, we have the integral of the derivative on the left-hand side, you're left with x plus two to the fourth times y. And on the right-hand side, you have the integral of five x plus two to the second dx. Okay, it's not that hard. Here you have x plus two to the fourth times y equals to five over three x plus two to the third plus c constant of integration. Now you can isolate y. Let us isolate y by dividing everything by x plus 2 to the 4. So y is 5 times x plus 2 to the third divided by 3 times x plus 2 to the fourth and plus c over x plus 2 to the fourth. So simplify y is 5 divided by 3 times x plus 2 and here you get c divided by x plus two to the fourth. We found the general solution for this differential equation. General solution. 